Thanks. We welcome you this morning to Lighthouse Tabernacle. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord. And again, we're endeavoring to take the message to Facebook today. A lot of folk have been having a house church, but I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. It's a joy to be in the sanctuary of God. Yes. Have a lot of prayer needs. If you would look on the back of your bulletin, uh, there are names of people who uh, are not able to be in the house of God, shut in, or health problems at home. Also, we need to pray for Sister Audine Dickey. Sister Audine fell and took a bad break to her hip and uh, may very well be in surgery right now. And so we want to remember Sister Audine. Also, Brother Tracy Noel has a physical need of prayer today. We want to remember him. And, and pray for the names over the bulletin. Here's the best way I know how to tell you to look at that. If your name's not on the back, you're blessed. But if your name was on the back, you pray for those names that are there like your name is there. And that's how I try to do that, to feel just that compassion and, and uh, uh, empathy for people. All right, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Let's do that together and uh, just ask the blessing of the Lord before we get into worship. Father, we bless you. What a mighty God you are. What a joyous and glorious day it is to gather in your house. Father, we're blessed to be here. We lift up the name of Jesus. Father, we have come to worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray, God, that you have your way with your people today. Father, those who are in this house, Lord, physically present, we bless them. Those that will visit us through Facebook, God, we ask for a touch on their hearts and their lives. Father, as the singers come, as the musicians come, we pray your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, those of you at home, get your Bibles out. Get ready to get your hands up and let's worship him. God bless you, Sister Diane. Aren't you glad for that amazing grace and that you're saved by grace this morning? Amen. You may have been in, in darkness and you couldn't find your way. And Jesus shined his light on you.
Is he your way maker this morning? Amen. Break those chains off. You may have had chains. Just break them off. If you've been walking that same old road for miles and miles, you've been hearing that same old voice tell those same old lies. If you're trying to feel those same old holes inside, there's a
Praise God. I'm going to get into the word this morning. We appreciate you again being in the house of the Lord. And I, I really, I, I find myself in a place of uh, wanting to just simply exhort, uh, but also preach too. The word of God said, he that exhorteth, let him wait on his exhortation. It's pretty hard to live in America today and to see what's going on in our country. And it's far larger than myself. But I do know the answer. And he is the answer. Amen. And uh, the tragedy, uh, the murder of the gentleman was just terrible. But what has grown out of... Um, those who lay in wait for a crisis in our country. And, and I really believe uh, that those are the days we're facing, that there is an organized effort. You say, well, you're a preacher. Well, I am a preacher. And uh, it affects all of our life. Now, my great desire is that the house of God not be divided uh, over this. You know, the enemy wants to always cause division. But also, I, I know for a fact, unequivocally, if we look to the word, God's law is number one. And friend, the lawless, lawlessness is a sin against the order of God. Right. Now we know that this world and this kingdom is going to come down. Uh, we know that uh, uh, as believers, uh, we know we're not home. We know that we're sojourners. We are pilgrims in the land uh, passing through. Uh, but while we're here as believers, I, I, I've just been doing a lot of praying and meditating. What, what is our response? Where, where do we find ourselves? What can we do? And uh, I, I continually come back to the same conclusion. We ought to be the church. We ought to be God's people. We ought to be light in darkness. We ought to be salt. Uh, we ought to represent the bread of life. Uh, there ought to be a difference in our spirit, in our tone, and in our attitude. It, it blows my mind that... Uh, we can burn down major cities in our country and think we're doing something uh, in the name of good. It absolutely makes no sense because somebody's going to rebuild it or somebody's going to choose not to rebuild it. And what have we accomplished at the end of the day? And I, I believe our response uh, as the body of Christ ought to be prayer. I believe as a nation, it ought to be repentance. And I believe repentance can uh, come to the house of God. Uh, I was reading a little history this week. And, uh, you know, the 13 colonies and those who came here looking for freedom to worship God in the way that they desired to worship Him, desiring not to live under tyranny, desiring to have freedom, uh, we know that there was a time of civil disobedience and actually the American Revolution came out of uh, after civil disobedience or resistance uh, in a quote civil way didn't work, uh, then uh, uh, they took up arms of defense and then ultimately out of that was born America. And a nation who, I don't care what leaders, political people say in rejection of a holy God, America was founded on godly principles. I, I was taught all through school how that uh, even ministers of the gospel were there uh, in the founding of the country, laying, laying the laws out based upon the word of God. And... Uh, if we would treat one another based on the love of God, love your neighbor as yourself, and you say, well, pastor, that, 
just seems real simplistic. Well, you know, simple sometimes is right before your face and you'll look at everything else. So uh, it, it's, uh, again, it's hard for me not to touch this at a level and preach about the hour that we live in. I again tell you, Sister Karen and I was visiting a little bit before service, and uh, I just don't believe you can be an honest Bible student. You may not agree, and we may not agree on every fine point, but the emphasis of the Word of God would be one day Jesus would return. And uh, he taught us in the word of God. We know morality is under threat. Christianity is under threat. Here's something I want to exhort about. Would you hear me just, just, just hear what I'm about to say? We cannot wrap our Christian testimony and Christianity up in an American flag. Now stay with me here. I love America. And I'll tell you what. Uh, we can do it this morning. If you don't love America, I'll talk to our leadership and our elders, and we'll take up an offering this morning, and we'll give it to you free for a one-way ticket, not a two-way ticket, a one-way ticket to any country you want to go to and don't come back. I love America. Yeah, I love America. I want to sing God Bless America. But we cannot wrap our Christianity up in American flag. One of these days, America, uh, it, it, it will come down. Every system of the world is going to fall at the feet of God. But we're occupiers. We are in occupation right now. And he said to occupy till he changes the program. One of these days... God's going to change the program, but until then, we are to be salty and cause people to thirst for God. We are to be light in the midst of darkness because the God of this world has blinded their eyes that they might not see the gospel. And if the gospel be hid, it means they're blind. Right. And so I just find myself with, with just a... a uh, a, a lot of things going on and, and people of God Uncle Sam, America needs our prayer like never before and uh, if, if the body of Christ uh, would bless this country, it would be by us being on our face truly praying for our leaders yes. truly praying for our country truly praying for the world with the ultimate Thing in mind that man would look up to God one more time and uh, and, and see that God is real uh, I thank God for separation of church and state I do not owe my allegiance first to America as a citizen I honor my country but my first responsibility is to honor God and him alone He's first. We ought to obey God rather than men. It has bothered me that for weeks and weeks we have been out of church and been out of church. I'm aware of the virus. I even know a person or two who had the virus. I understand that. And one of them that dies uh, touches people and, and we hate it. But on the other hand, uh, to be out of our churches and not have the opportunity to come and then to see what's going on right now in our world as thousands and thousands of people are on the street looting and riotous, lawless living and burning our country down. Hey, where's the six foot rule there? There's no such thing. Because you see, the heart of a man without God is wicked. That's you and that's me. And I'm not trying to simplify. It's a big problem. But all the implication of it is this. If we'll get our heart right, we'll love everybody. Hello? If we get our heart, hey, if we don't have our heart right, we can have a riot in here. We need a riot or revival, right? We need a revival. America needs a revival. Amen. 
The church needs revival. Yes. So I want to encourage you, saints of God. Uh, uh, God is totally and completely in control. He's not caught off guard by those who would practice anarchy. And I really believe that's what we're seeing in response to a very, very uh, unjustified murder of a man begging for his life. But those who would rise up and, and war against this nation, uh, I believe we're seeing it firsthand. And I don't like it. But I know God is the answer. So if you have your Bibles and you want to read along with me, and, and you're just going to have to bear with me today, and uh, we'll just call this whatever the Lord wants to do with it. But I want to read some scripture you're all familiar with. And uh, I remember several years ago where it seemed like every time you went to church, turned the TV on and the radio on, the preachers was preaching this area of scripture and now it just for the hour we're in it seems like we've come full circle to the fact of the need you remember how Solomon wanted to build the house of God yeah. and God wanted it done absolutely to the letter of his outline mm -hmm. and Solomon had to follow the plan of God explicitly Explicitly to have the blessings of God. And do you know he did that? We live in a world today, they're not explicitly following God. And if we don't follow God as God would have us follow him, come on church, he has ways of getting our attention. Somebody said, did he send the COVID-19 to our world? No, but he can sure use it to get our attention. Amen. But Solomon built the house of God. David wanted to, but David had blood on his hands. David was a man of war, even though he had a heart after God's own heart. And God wouldn't let David build. But he, he allowed his son to be raised up. And so I want you to look at 2 Chronicles 7 and verse number 11. And I want to just read that to you. Here's where we're at, church. We're here as a nation. We're here as a people. Amen? Yes. If our country would do this right now, if the church of God around the world, that's not a denomination, that's a people. If the church of the living God around the world would do this, we could see a turn in every tide. Of sin and rebellion in our world. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord. And the king's house. And all that came into Solomon's heart. To make him the house of the Lord. And in his own house. He prosperously effected. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night. And said unto him. I have heard thy prayer. And have chosen this place. To myself for a house of sacrifice. Don't you love the house of God? Don't you love it when his presence comes as we meet two or three together? And he says, there I am in the midst of you. Yes. And God, as he watched from the portals of heaven and, and as Solomon laid everything out and David got much of the materials and probably most of them, but much of the materials for the temple to be built and the pleasure of God was satisfied. And Solomon completed the work, and the Lord appeared to him and said, I've heard your prayer. And you know, saints of God, when we pray, God will hear our prayer. That's why he invited us to go into the prayer closet. He said, if any would enter in and close the door, he said, I'll see you. Matthew's Gospel, the sixth chapter, he said, I will see you there in prayer. And he said, and after you've prayed, I'll reward you openly. And this is how I perceive that. Because you prayed at home this morning, because you prayed at home this week, because you've had church before you got here. God saw you in the prayer closet. And now we're gathered corporately. And as we come together corporately with our hearts prepared, God said, I'll pour out a blessing. That's how I perceive that verse. The blessing comes 
after prayer. And he said, Solomon, I've seen it. Listen, the exhortation and the promise, Brother Rick, that God said to Solomon, and get this, God has taken responsibility for what happened. See, there's people, if there's a negative in the world, they never want to think God can bring it. Should I say that again? Or that God could use it. He sent the pestilence. Hello? He sent them and he used it. Someone said, oh, I bind the devil. That was the devil. No, it was God. Look at this verse of scripture. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain. Do you know the Bible said it rains on the just and the unjust? Every time I get a chance, if a friend calls... Uh, and I get to tell them it rained. They said, well, ain't had no rain here. And I said, I know it rains on the just first. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get to about three in the morning. Don't call me. Yeah. Hey, man, that's a little holier than now, right? But he said, if I shut up heaven and there be no rain, hey, God told Elijah, tell them there will be no more rain. And God used it as an attention getter. He said, you're not going to listen to me. You're going to live in rebellion. He said, you're going to sow to the wind. I'll let you see what happens in America. You'll reap the whirlwind. He said, if I shut up the rain, if there's pestilence in the land, I mean, look at, read your Bible. Gaddy's not making this up. But I can read it in the word. He said, if I shut up heaven. And Elijah told the king, there will be no more rain. And there was no rain. Three years, period. Hey, it's rained the last two years. We could maybe take six months off. I don't know. Now think about it here. Think about it. Or if I command the locusts to devour the land. Who said he commanded it? God did it. We don't blame everything on the devil because we don't want to believe that a holy God will send a pestilence to get our attention. Come on, somebody help me. Pre hey, if you don't say, man, I'll just holler twice as loud and embarrass you on Facebook. <laughs> right? Hey, Amen. They'll say, boy, it's good I can get this on Facebook and I don't have to be there live. <laughs> he said, if I command the locusts to devour the land or if I send pestilence among the people, that's God, not the devil. Oh, but look what he said. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will what? Heal their land. Do we need a healing in our land? Do we, need a, do we need a healing in our heart? Do we need a healing... Friend, we need to think about it different. We need to think about God. We need to think about the laws of God. We need to think about the foundation of our faith. We need to be reminded while we're pilgrims here, there is a place that we're supposed to be that we affect people. Amen. And us having an effect, we got to be salt and light. We got to be different than the world. They, hey, claim to be a Christian and not live any different than those that you work with. Honey, they'll talk about you behind their back and they'll say, you know, I don't like him being in the break room. You don't want to preach to us. Think that he don't live any different than us. I've heard it in living color. Hey. They may not ever pat you on the back, but you do a misstep, and friend, they'll point out your back. Come on, is there somebody real in the house? He said, if my people called by my name, if it starts at the church first, he said, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear before the judgment of God? Hey, saints, the responsibility to be light in this world falls on you and I. How many of you have ever had a salt pill in your life? I mean, you know, they do make them. I've seen them in sports centers and in gym. 
people take them. I mean, if you know salt will make you thirsty. Salt is a preservative, but it'll also make you thirsty. And I want to tell you what, we need to be in a place before God, humble and broken and prayer and seeking his face. And, and a lot of times when they put it on the billboards, you'll see this verse of scripture on the billboard, but you won't, they don't print out and turn from their wicked ways. Saints, it's wickedness burning this country down. Hello. Right, yeah. It's wickedness burning this country down. I'm going to tell you what I told you last Sunday. I can just hear them out on the streets talking and say, Hey man, let's go to Whataburger tonight. Oh, we burned it down last night and they're probably not going to rebuild. What we should have been is praying, seeking God. And they say, well, we prayed all of our lives seeking God. Friend, we're still living life and we still need God to move. And he said, if my people will pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, I'll hear from heaven, will forgive their sin and heal their land. Man, them words have burnt in my soul this weekend and this week and heal their land. Honey, a man's not going to figure it out. God's already given us the answer. And the way to figure it out is to get our nose back in the book and get our head down between our knees in prayer somewhere, calling on the Holy God. Do we really want God to heal our land? Do we really want God to heal our country and our nation? Do we really want to see God turn this thing around? Amen. Yes. Now mine eyes shall be open and my ears attempt under the prayer that's made in this place. He said, Solomon, you have fulfilled everything I have laid out. You talk about an engineering feat. And you can read the descriptions line upon line, precept upon precept, how God wanted it built. And when obedience took place and God from heaven saw he absolute. Did you know how? Hey, let me let me just bring it a little closer. Do you know when the smoke of God's glory filled the tabernacle, that the preachers and the people tried to get into the church? Did you know it's in your Bible? And the power of God was so real. Now I'm going to embarrass some of you right now. So close your eyes or. <laughs> said that the power of God and the glory was so real in the sanctuary that they were falling out on the outside before they could even get in the house. Yeah, wow. Falling out yeah. in the power and the glory of God. Amen. Saints, there's nothing going on in our country. There's nothing going on in our world. There's nothing going on in the church that couldn't be taken care of by a people who would humble themselves and pray. We need God. Amen. We need to say, well, preacher, that's just real simplistic. We need God. Everybody knows we need God. Well, then let's act like we need God. Right. Everybody isn't acting like we need God. We need <coughs> God. We and I want to read another one to you that's on my heart. going to be a little bit different, so just stay with me. I want to, I want to follow my heart, and I want to talk to you. God's our ultimate authority. It's what God sees, it's what God requires, it's what the Lord wants of us, is what should concern us most. Do you remember when Jesus walked through the seven churches of Asia? Friend, the world's not going to settle what's going on in this world. They're not going to do it. They're going to fight about the answers. They're all going to have an opinion. They're all going to have a desire. And it's all going to point back to God. What does God think? What does God desire? What does God want to do about it? And he walked through the seven churches. And really only one of the churches that he did not find something to say where they were short of obedience. But I want to call your attention to Revelations, the third chapter and verse number one. I believe we're in prophetic days. I believe it is the last days. 
Friend, you would have me deny all of my heritage. You would have me deny my biblical study. I'm not bragging. I've read this book over 50 years of my life. Do the math. Most of my life has been invested. I've anchored my walk. I've anchored my faith. My children know it. My grandchildren know it. My wife knows it. I know it and God knows it. And friend, my heart and my desire is thus saith the Lord. I've lived for God, walked through too many miles and battles to abort the journey now. How many of you want to make heaven your home? Amen. How many of you feel like Amen. Abraham this Amen. morning? I'm a man looking for a city whose builder and maker is God who laid the foundation. And one day we're going to go there. But until then, we've got to live in this world. What does God want you to do right now in this world? How do you talk to people? How do you affect people? How do you reach out with the gospel? How can we be a witness in such a divided time? By the grace of God and by the word of God and by the anointing of God and by the spirit of God, yes. God will use us. I'm not discouraged in the Lord. How about you? I am not discouraged in God. We got to square our shoulders, lift our head and know God has it. It's disturbing days, but Jesus said perilous times would come. Jesus warned us and said in the last days it would be like Noah. Said there would be days of rebellion. There would be days of dissension. There would be days of division. Man can put it under a lot of titles, but friend, it's rebellion against a holy God. Are you with me this morning? What did he tell Sardis? And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write these things, saith he that hath the seven spirits of God. And that seven, seven is God's number, and it's a number of completeness, right? Amen. Just like our week, Amen. seven days in a week, a complete and a full week. And, and it speaks of the unity, the uniformity, the seven spirits of God, the, 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 the uh, completeness of God. Yes. This seven represents that completeness of of the Father. And uh, he, he said, I know thy works. Honey, do not make any mistake about it. Inside the church, outside the church, God is aware of the works that are transpiring in our world. And how many of you know the only way you're going to be rewarded is by your works? Right? Look what he says very specifically to this church. Look what he tells them. He said, you have a name that you're alive and dead. Or how many churches in the world has a name? We're alive, we're alive, singing alive, alive, and we're dead, dead. Hey, it's no time to be dead, saints. You need to be alive in Christ. But he told them. He, he said, you, you've got that testimony and notice what he says, and, and this is a good word, Lighthouse. You on Facebook today, this, this is a good word. What did Jesus consistently say? He would say, watch and pray, right? Watch and pray. Be aware. See that no man deceive you. Be, be attentive. Be in that place of sobriety. Be aware. Watch. And, and he told them. He, and, and it isn't a put down. Jesus was walking in the churches that he might get up under them and build them up. Hey, I, we need him to walk in Lighthouse. We need him to walk in every church in this city where they proclaim the name of the Lord. We need him to walk in America. Yes, We really do. But he, he told them, he said, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to to die. You know, dying is not pretty. If you've ever been with loved ones that died, and it's so fresh for me on my mother's death, I didn't like it. I've never, I've never liked it when I stand with you and your loved one. Death is an enemy. Hey, the death and the destruction, I think beyond George Floyd, I think about how many more people have to die to, to come to the end of this stuff that's going on in the country 
And then it also makes me wonder, Chicago, do you know a couple of weekends ago, 10 people died, were murdered in Chicago? Do you know Chicago rarely, really makes the news? And there are multitudes of people die in that area constantly, 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 constantly die. Well, we ought to be writing every day for the one death in Chicago. There, there's, there's bigger things here at issue, and it starts and falls at the feet of God. If men will just get their heart right, everything else will come in line. Can I say that again? If men would get their heart right, everything else will come in line. You're not shouting me down, but it's true. Do I need to hurry and get along here? I figured I did. Amen. Now look, he said, strengthen the things that are ready to die. For I have not find, found thy works perfect before God. He did Solomon's, and that's why he poured out the blessing of the Lord. He saw the work of Solomon perfect. And everything to the satisfaction. And he said, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, turn from their wicked way, I'll see from heaven and I'll pour out the blessing. To do what? To heal their land. Remember. I'm glad to remember that this was founded as a Christian nation. I don't care who says it wasn't. It was. Hey, you were taught at your whole educational. Some of us even had prayer and remember when they could read the Bible yeah. in church. I mean in school. Yeah. It was about my, my generation that they absolutely stopped that. Now some of them are independently doing that. But you know, if you remember... It brings back some understanding, maybe, of where we've been. Right. Cliché saying, but if we don't remember back there, we'll repeat it up here. Yeah. It's true. It's true. Therefore, thou hast received and heard, hold fast. And what did he tell him to do? Repent. Repentance, saints of God, really is the message of the hour. Yeah. You know what it's going to take to be acceptable and be pleasing when the Lord comes back for his people? In my church, in my theology, it's the word of God. To stand in the presence of a holy God, you're going to have to be one that has taken the responsibility of your sinful life having repented and God put it under the blood and receive you and pour out a blessing and change your life. Yeah. Wow. I want to be there. Amen. Amen. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. We have every warning the last day saints we, we have every hour of, of warning for the day that we're living in this is our hour this is our generation this is our day God knew the very day you would be born he knew the very day in the generation that I would be born in I used to think man I wished I'd live back I was raised by such a cowboy and around some of that influence and I used to think Man, I wish I could have lived with the cowboys and Indians. And then I figured, Brother Bruce, I'd have been the first one shot out of the sand. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hey, this is our hour. The Bible said David served his own generation and fell on sleep. Saints, would you hear me today? This is our generation. We have got to serve our generation. We have got to be salt and light in 2020 in our generation. Amen. I got a text last night about 11 o'clock. But I was already in dreamland, but I read it this morning. And it had that 2020 vision on it. it said, hey, maybe somebody stole your idea. And they sent me a little text. 
And then it said at the end of it, maybe 2020 vision is God saying, hey, the only answer is me being in control. And friend, that starts with us bowing before holy God. Right. So he told Sardis what he recognized about them, what they needed to do, and the correction for them to be in that acceptable place of the Lord. They were to watch, they were to pray, they were to repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come unto thee. He said, Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled, defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. And can I encourage you today, friend, don't get caught up with the division of the world today. Don't, don't give more attention. You'll hear me, church. Don't give more attention to the confusion and the chaos that's going on than your walk with Christ and your time in prayer and your time in the Word of God. Listen, we know in the end, the ultimate end, you read in the book of Revelation, God wins. All of these kingdoms are going to come down. They're going to Throw them at the feet of Jesus Christ. And one day, God's going to fix it all. But until then, we need to find ourselves in a position being who we ought to be in Christ. Having the love of God shed abroad. We ought to love everybody. Right. We ought to bless everybody. Are you with me this morning? We ought to touch every life. We ought to have a heart as big as God to be different and to be light and to be salt. I can't emphasize it enough. I'll tell you, there's a spirit of Cain in the world today. It's jealousy, hatred, and murder. Right. Mm -hmm. Am I my brother's keeper? You better believe you're your brother's keeper. The blood of the brother cried from the ground. He said, where's your brother? Hey, is it my day to watch him? Yeah, it is. But his jealousy led to anger and his anger led to murder. And it put a mark on him that Cain could never escape. And he said, your judgment is too hard. And for it, I want to tell you, when judgment falls, if the axe is already laid at the tree, root of the tree, when an axe is already on the root, it, uh, it's not much farther to go ahead and chop through that. And you talk about death, but it will be an eternal one and without remedy. We're, we're in a position that, that we have an opportunity to overcome. Brother Rick, we can overcome. How I many of you plan to be an overcomer in him? Amen. Yeah. Greater is he that lives in you than he that's in the world. Yes, that's right. He said, he that overcometh, will I give him a name? I write it in the white stone. Him that overcometh, will I make to be a pillar in the temple of my God? I don't know, I just feel like exhorting and feel like encouraging. And I want to tell you, I don't believe everybody's backslid in the church of, of the living God. I believe there's some people love God with all of their heart and they're praying for this world, praying for this country, and praying for the church. Unless you think I was bragging, I'd say I'm one of them. <laughs> Someone would say, well, preacher, I'd thank God's using you if I didn't know different. Oh. Huh? Yes. Hey, it's time to be an overcomer. Yes. Amen. It's time to walk pure before God. Yes. Time to be in the place that he's called us to. He said, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will blot out his name. I will not blot, I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before the Father and before his angels. And then he, before he changes and goes on down the church. He said, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith. Can we just slow down just a minute? Can I ask you something? Sis, what do you, what do you think God's really saying to us right now? Brother Mike, what do, you, what do you think God's really saying to us? Brother Tim, Brother Steve, what do, hey, what do, what, do we, what do we think God's saying? 
What, what are we supposed to hear the this, this Spirit saying? Brother Ed, what, what is God trying to, to say to us in the world today? I go to the book and I read scriptures like this. I, t I tell you what, I, I, I believe another part of our problem. Can we turn to Psalms? Now, I am totally lost on my time here when I started and when, when I ended. But maybe we just stay here till 2 o'clock. <laughs> I still like it. The little boy said, hey, Daddy, what's it mean when the preacher looks at his watch? He said, not a thing. <laughs> Doesn't mean a thing, son. Let, let's, let's look at Psalms 33. And uh, let, let's just see if there's any wisdom in, in there for our hour. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous. Are you righteous? Are you in right standing with God? That's what righteousness is. Hey, honey, it's an hour to be right with God. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. God knows. I don't know what the end result of all this is going to be. I know one, one day it's going to turn into pure glory. Abraham was a pilgrim. Sojourning in the land, knowing he wasn't home yet. Looking. Hey, we're looking for the same city. And it's going to come one of these days. But until then, we need to know how to function in this world. What are you telling your neighbors? What are they telling? I know we've got this separation going on. Well, we did have. It's got kind of crazy out on the streets. What are you going to say? What's your witness going to be? What, what are you going to tell somebody? How are you going to share? What's going to be the message? What's going to be the, the goal? He said, Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. Praise the Lord with harp. Sing unto him with psaltery and an instrument of ten strings. And we've been doing that here in the house of God today. Sing unto, unto him a new song. Play skillfully with a loud noise. For the word of the Lord is right. I've been giving you the word, not Gaddy's opinion. You get on Facebook and there's 50 million opinions. Yeah. I never was on Facebook. If you want to send pictures of your grandkids and have your high school buddies say, oh, they're so cute, they look just like you, I'm all about it. But I've really resisted Facebook. What put me on Facebook is to have the opportunity to share the gospel. People get on Facebook and they tell one another, ah, hello. Mm -hmm. They condemn one another. They fuss and fight and they share their opinions. Just, just the little bit of dabbling I've done in recent weeks. I know you use it for good, but I'm talking about the one that doesn't. I understand why I haven't messed with it. I'm just saying Take that out of the video. <laughs> For the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in truth. Yes. Truth has fallen to the street. Buy the truth and sell it not. The truth is we need to get back to the truth, then we'll know all the truth. And if you know the truth, the truth will what? He loveth right, this is God, he loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. We need to look around. What a beautiful world we live in. What a beautiful creation. What a majestic world God gave us and he called it all good. Wow. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathered the waters of the sea together as a heap. He layeth up the depths in storehouse. Let all the, let all the earth fear the Lord. And there's part of our problem in America today. We have lost our fear. Come on, son, can, can I have one weak eight, man? That's W-E-A-K. We've lost our fear of God. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of Him. Yes. Amen. 
For he spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Wow, this starts getting heavy right here. Listen, listen to it here. Brother Travis, listen to what he says. For the Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. And here's the thing about it. Truth's going to stand forever when the foolishness of this world's going to fall flat. Counsel the Lord standeth forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generation. This is the one that tore me up this week, and I've been thinking about. Here's our great need. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Yes. That's our blessing, saints. I know we're backslid as a Christian nation, but we were founded as a Christian. Don't ever let anybody lie to you. Guard your children, teach your children, teach your grandchildren. Yes. Huh? Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Hey, God talked about government. God talked about nations. God talked about governors being ministers to his book. When's the last time you've read Romans, the 13th chapter? There's no authority but of God. And there's no authority but what God gives them. To a man to keep count. It blows my mind. They wanted to, to unfund the cops in the world. For dirty cops, they want to get rid of all cops. Not in my neighborhood. Bring them on. Someone said, but my neighborhood, it's a problem. I'm not denying. As I watch the film and video again, I'll, I'll talk about it again. I, I just was so sickened and overwhelmed and disgusted. And the policeman killed that man in the eyes of the world. But burning America down is not going to fix it. Only God and men getting their heart right will fix it. <clears throat> God's counsel is going to stand forever. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. Saints were chosen people. I'll be closing. I know time's getting on. The Lord looketh from heaven. And he beholdeth all the sons of men. Saints, there's nothing going on in this world today. But what God from heaven is watching it all. He's watching you and me. There are sins of commission. There are sins of omission. There are sins that I can do by my action. And there's sin that I can do by me not taking my action. It's one thing to pray for the harvest. It's another thing to go out and win them. I can say, oh, we're just praying over our board. We're just praying over our board. Oh, we build it and it's there. And every time we come to church, we see our little prayer board. But do we actually go out there with feet and try to win them? How many of you love the pastor? This is heavy in my heart today. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. The Lord looketh from heaven, and he beholdeth all the sons of men. From the place of his habitation, he looketh on all the inhabitants of the earth. He fashioneth their heart alike. He considereth all their works. There is no king saved by the multitude of a host. You know, if the whole world gathers and wants to run over a king, he, he said no king could even be saved by a mighty host. A mighty man is not delivered by his strength. <clears throat> Samson got his eyes poked out. Samson got his hair cut. How be it? Read it in your Bible. It charges me every time I hear. How be it the hair began to grow again? But you know when his strength returned? When he repented. 
and he said, God, do it one more time. You know what we need? We need a one more time move of God. We need a one more time of humbling ourselves before the Father. We need a one more time of prayer. Might doesn't save us. Strength doesn't save us. A horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. And oh, the strength of a horse. We've been kicked. We've been bucked off. We have ran. We have, oh, and there is mighty strength. They can't save. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy. You know what our hope is, saints, come on, church. You know what our hope is? In the mercy of God. Yes. Who can reach down into our rebellion, who can reach down into our blindness, who can reach down into our selfishness, who can reach down into our life and change our heart and our heart change changes our minds and our thoughts. We don't think like we used to after we're saved. I'm going to prove it in just a minute. And I told you, I'm closing. He said, Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. And you know, the Bible said there was a day coming, Sister Connie, where there would be a famine in the land, but the famine wouldn't be plants and whatever, but it would be a famine for the true word of God. People dying because we do not get the truth of his word. If we open his mercy, and deliver their soul from death. Keep them alive in famine. Our soul waiteth for the Lord, for he is our help and our shield. And that's what I'll remind you to today, church. Everybody on Facebook, I want to remind you in this crazy, chaotic day, in these perilous times, in these dark hours, friend, God is your hope. He is your mercy. He is your strength. Abide under the shadow of his wings. God will keep us for another day. For our heart shall rejoice in him, for we have trusted in his holy name. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in thee. That's my prayer today. Oh, God, let your mercy be on America. Oh, God, let your mercy be on the church. Oh, God, let us take responsibility. Let us get back in an altar and wait on you. And I want to close with 1 Peter, the fourth chapter. Be the last scripture. I brought many more, but this will be the last scripture. Man, this has touched me as I've read this this week. 1 Peter 4, 1. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, and no one suffered and died as Christ did. He did it to where we wouldn't have to suffer in the flesh. We could be free. He said, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. I'll tell you what we've got to do. We've got to arm ourselves in 2020 with the mind of Christ. We've got to think like God's thinking. Hello? we got to think like God's thinking. For he hath suffered in the flesh, for he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. When you craw crawled up on the cross and died for yourself, and friend, that's, if you're going to be a saved man or woman, that's what you've got to do. You've got to get your own cross, and you've got to crawl up on that, and you've got to say, no more me, but Christ lives in me. This day I die to you, Jesus. This is what he's talking about. The crucifixion of the flesh. A lot of flesh going on in this world. Not God, a lot of flesh. That he should no longer live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. Yes. This is what needs to be done. America needs to seek the will of God. The church needs to seek the will of God. You need to seek the will of God. What is the will of God in your life in this hour? 
For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. Remember when you was a heathen on the street? When we walked in lasciviousness and lust and excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. When I read this one, it just ran over me. Wherein they think it strange that you not run with them to the same excess of riot and speaking evil of you. Because you don't join them in the mayhem. You don't join them in that kind of riot. I used to be a rider in my heart. But friend, that's not the answer in God. Wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. Who shall give an account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? For this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. That's what it just said to us. I want Brother Rob and Sister Diane and prepare to come around. Here's what the church needs to do. We need to be sober. My father-in-law, before he came to Christ, was delivered of alcoholism. <clears throat> Fight and beat on his wife. Get his children up all hours of the night. Set them on a couch and say it's her fault. Yeah, I'm talking about your preacher's wife. That's why she don't have much time to talk about, people want to talk about alcohol. Hey, don't find your liberty with Sister Diane. She don't have much liberty for alcoholism and what alcohol does to people's lives. Sheriff had to take them and run them and hide them out. Then he'd spend the weekend looking for them. Her family would say divorce him, and she said, if, if, if I don't stay with him, she said, I don't believe in divorce. She said, if I don't stay with him, you probably never get saved. She did stay with him, and I'd have told her, get out of Dodge. I would have. <laughs> I'd, I'd have told her that. I said, he, he ought to beat you the last time. But you know what? He did get saved. Amen. Amen. Truth did win. God did bring truth. Am I telling them right, Sister Diane? Amen. And you still married that preacher. And God's still saving siblings and bringing them to Christ. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. This victory is going to win. This isn't the last, the, the last moment. This isn't the last occasion of the entire scenario. God's going to win. Come on, Rob. You've got to get closer to here. I know you're afraid I'm going to preach in there. Who shall give an account to him that's ready to judge the quick and the dead. But we preach the gospel. And here it is. But the end of all things is at hand. Be therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Did you hear what I just read to you? Hey, honey. In this church, you will hear a prophetic message. I, no, nothing do I love preaching better than just little biblical stories and just digging them out. Peter sinking in the water. Come on, Sister Diane. Peter getting out of the boat. Jesus saving him. Zacchaeus climbing up a tree. Come down, Zacchaeus. I'm going to your house for tea. Salvation's come to your house today. Mary kneeling at the feet of Jesus and anointing his feet against his separation. I love preaching all that. Ruth gleaning in the field. Come on, Sister Diane. Boy, she makes me look a little better. <laughs> Not like Brother Mike yesterday on Facebook. Sister Courtney really helped him a whole lot. <laughs> love you, Brother Mike. I'm just kidding. Could you just stand over the building today? Could we just feel this moment? Are we praying, saints?
we call it on his name are we asking God some way, somehow, God, break through? Some way, somehow, God, let the love of God be shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. That such love would compel us and bring healing and wholeness. God, that through repentance and prayer, God, if we just turn from our sin and our wickedness, God, you can send a healing to America, to the church world. God, you can just move in by your Holy Spirit. And God, you can begin to stir us and you can begin to move, God. You can begin, God, to make us see what really counts, what really matters, and what doesn't. And God, only you count. When we do all the math, if a man gains a whole world and loses his own soul, he dies the poorest that ever lived. Oh, God. Lord, if we know about you, but we fail and we miss the mark and we live according to the flesh because we were too proud and stubborn to repent, God, then it's all a waste. Oh, God, I'm a witness to your spirit even now. God, right now. Thank you, Lord, for your presence this very moment. God, the witness of your Holy Spirit, I thank you for it. And God, you want to move among us, Lord. You want to touch us. You want to speak to hearts. You want to speak to lives. God, you're the change agent. You're the one, God, that can take it. Take our mess and take our sin and our rebellion. God, you can turn it around. You can make a new man or a new woman out of us. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for redemption. Thank you for forgiveness of sin. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that abides in our life. Help us to love you and serve you in a greater way. God, I pray for America. I pray for our leaders. God, I plead the blood of Jesus. God, I lift it up today. I pray for the church. Oh, God, you want the church to be the church, salt and light. In this day, in this hour, in this world, help us, God. Oh, I plead the blood of Jesus. God, I stand on the word, the truth of your scriptures today, God. You are the answer. You alone. Oh, in these next few moments, let's so join Sister Diane and let's worship the Lord. Oh, God, help us. Help us, Lord. God, help us today, Father. We need you so desperately. In the presence. Oh, sing it, Sister Diane. Come on, sing it.
Let's do it together. Lift your hand in your heart and let's thank him for his presence. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for the breath of life. Oh God, it's all healed in your presence. Father, for those on Facebook today and in their homes. Father, those who are shut in, God, we ask that you touch them. Lord, that one that doesn't know you in the free and the full pardon of their sin, not yet repented and Christ is not their Savior. Father, let them find rest and joy, your salvation in the presence of God. As we leave this house, Lord, never out of your presence, we go in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you and God keep you today, church. Amen.